All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is June 5th, 2022, and we are in the month. We are in the Hebrew month. We are in the Gregorian month. Brothers and sisters, we are watching. We are diligently seeking and searching the Lord because we know the time is at hand. It is no doubt at hand. We've shared so much recently on this, and especially over the last, oh man, six months or so. This has been our laser focus season and time for 2022, based on everything Scripture has revealed to us over these past almost five years. And <laughs> it's just an, it's a nail-biting roller coaster emotional ride right now, isn't it? You know, I, 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 it was like today, I, I just, you know, our family dinner we have, and I just wasn't very hungry tonight. You know, it's just, you're, you're kind of, you're not, I'm not saying you're knotted up and it's not the same for everybody, but just, we know where we're at and we're, we're anticipating and it's so close. We just, Lord, when is that one thing that we can, that we can just seal it and say, that's it. We know, Lord, that's what we're waiting for, right? That one thing that Lord. Please let it be known. Speak to one of us. Give us the, let us know, right? Are we close enough now that you can finally give us an audible, finally give us a, a thus say it the Lord. I mean, something that would just seal the deal for us. But, you know, when I, when I think about those things and I, and I, and I ask on those things and I pray about those things, I still hear our brother, Ivan, uh, our brother from South Africa. I still hear him saying, I remember him telling me this a while back. He says, you know what, though? We're living in the age of faith, right? We are in, we are in this period of time that is all about faith. You see, Scripture tells us you, you don't need faith if you've, if you've seen, right? If, you, if you've been told or witnessed and all those things, you, you don't need faith anymore. In fact, you can't even have faith or, I mean, hope in that sense. Hope is something not yet seen. So if you've seen, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's So this is what we hope for, right? We are hoping, we are praying, we are seeking and searching, right? It's the hope. And that's what continues to draw us closer and closer. And that's why one thing you virtually never hear that I know of in this ministry, we don't all say that, oh, we're automatically part of the bride. We're automatically part of pre-trib. You don't hear that in this ministry. Because we've got scripture everywhere that we could show that says if, right? Here's a great example. I was going to share this a couple of videos ago, and I actually still have it because we did the, a live show. So some of you guys might be saying, well, what are you doing? You know, you're later than usual, right? Because I should have done a video last night. Um, but I said I was going to the mountains today, which is only like 45 minutes from us. And we did a live show on uh, Friday with Mike, talked about a bunch of these things that I said I would go into greater detail in today's video. And this is uh, what we touched on as well, just in, in passing in some of the things that we talked about. You know, it's these pieces of scripture that really, you, you should not be somebody just saying, well, of course I'm part of the bride. I love the Lord. I'm with the Lord. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't mean you're not part of the bride. Of course, if you're diligent in the Lord and you're loving them and you're seeking them and you spend time with them daily and so forth. Yeah, I'm not saying you're not. But we certainly don't go around saying we are. You see? Because there's these scary little words that you get right here. See that one? If you continue in the faith. You see, if you continue in the faith, see, not if you continue to find faith. No, it said in the faith. So some people will say, well, you know, uh, it just means that if somebody fell out, it means they didn't really have it in the first place. That's that's what a lot of people would say. And I used to say that in the past as well. And in in maybe in a, in a roundabout way, it could kind of seem like, you know, because it was the intention that that was just going to happen. but. This wording says, in the faith, if you continue in the faith. So they were clearly in the faith. You know, what's another one? There's another one here in 1 Thessalonians, right? Is it 1 Thessalonians? Yeah, 1 Thessalonians 3. For now we live if, <laughs> you see, for now you live if ye stand fast in the Lord. 
Okay, all of these ifs, this one in Galatians is really scary too. So it says, uh, let's start in verse 8. Galatians 6, starting in verse 8. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. If. <laughs> I hate that word. <laughs> that's, that's a terrifying word in Scripture. If we faint not. Okay? I think this is just, I think this is very important right now. I don't think anybody in this ministry anyways should be feeling like they're anywhere near fainting. Okay? We are in a very, very exciting time. We have had so much revelation over the past five years, almost five years, that, that whether you're, you're brand new, man, you should be so excited because if you've begun to understand these things revealed in this ministry, if you've gone to this playlist, if you're new, and you come to this, the Revealed End Time Study Note Series playlist, and you've begun to understand these things, one second. There we go. So that if you're new and you've come and you've started to look at these introduction videos and begun to understand what is revealed here and you're new, man, you've got like 400 videos you can go through. There is so much. We've got a book at ministryrevealed.com or in the description box under this video that you're listening to. You can, you can go to the website, download the free PDF, or you could read the book right from the website. Or if you want a paperback, then you can go to Amazon or you can get the ebook on Amazon. But guys, it is available to anybody in any form that they want. All right. And when you begin to understand these things, these are things that the church has been seeking for hundreds of years. And I'm not kidding when I say that. I'm not trying to, to exaggerate anything. Trying to know or wanting to understand who the Gospels are speaking to wanting to understand who Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John speak to, and in particular the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, these have been things wondered and desired and, and to, to see why there's differences about the exact same story. How somebody says two over here were there and another one says one, but then we're told, oh, it's just perspective. It's impossible if it's perspective if there's two in one story and one in the other. Or in one story, it says 40 days. In the other story, it says nothing. You're not going to get anything. And then the Lord leaves. You know, these are not perspective. There is something, there was a mystery built in to these gospels. And we have been given the key to open it up. It is awesome. And so when you begin to understand that in this video, then you apply these things to the end of days. This, this is, the, is the ministry about the revelation of the is to come. But in the revelation of the is to come, we've been given clarity and understanding of the things of the is that we're still a part of. Because the is is from the time of Christ until the day of the escape, which we believe is June 2022. And then we were also given even greater clarity of the was, which was from in the beginning until Christ came. So when you, when you understand these things with the Gospels, man, I know every single one of you that could hear my voice or that, in that has read the book or has gone through these teachings, I know every single one of you were just like, this is awesome. I can't believe we never knew this. You see? And when that happens and you go to the second video because you begin to understand these differences when the, within the Gospels, you realize that, oh my goodness, everything we thought was seven years isn't just one set of seven, it's two sets of seven. The reason Mark's discourse sounds a little bit different than Matthew's is because it is. It's a different portion of time. One is seven of seals, one is seven of trumpets. And then you go to Luke's discourse and it's completely different. And that's because Luke's is a short period of time. Luke's is a very short period of time which is called above 14 years. That's this portion of time from June until the end of September, 2022. It's about to begin. And so, you know, for me, it's, it's always been this question that I've had. So, well, before I get there, 
and go to the third one that comes next so if you're brand new and you still haven't watched this video it's i'm telling you it, it's such a big deal to watch this third one it's a long one but it's worth it because you're going to understand how all of these things previously mentioned were missed first of all it wasn't the timing of the lord to make these things known before otherwise they would have been so why is it that a little ministry with a guy in his garage who built a little makeshift like temple shed in his garage to do these teachings from so that a few thousand people around the world can understand it why have why have it more why have it more and why have others who we've tried to share it with why haven't they <clears throat> if it's something that the church and that that seminaries have been have been desiring to know for centuries who the gospels are speaking to an understanding of of the end of days why why aren't they all coming why aren't they flocking to come and hear us so that they could dig into it deeper for themselves that's that's always been bothering me okay well when you come to this video here you're going to see first of all that it it's it's about god's timing and that it wasn't meant for all otherwise it would have been at that time it would have happened hundreds of years ago but you're also going to find out how it happened is because we have all been taught because the gospels are saying the same story overall in the is of what happened to christ the church just made a decision and said hey we'll just go from matthew matthews is the first book matthews to the jews you know they understood that it was to the jews they never really understood mark and luke which was the problem and so everything we've ever learned has come from the foundation of matthew so this video called it's all because of matthew is because everything we've been taught unbeknownst to the world that's been listening is we've all been taught with a foundation in matthew so whether you're aware of it or not everybody has this concept from a viewpoint of matthew which is to the jews and so when you have the viewpoint of the jews then everything you're seeing is their portion of time so even when you're going to read into scripture and you're reading about pre and then you so then you would say oh we're going pre before the seven years well it's right but then you go to matthew 24 and you try to explain it for matthew 24 and it's an absolute mess because matthew 24 is about the end it's the last seven years of trumpets and so it's it's just so twisted but when you begin to understand these things, your excitement goes through the roof. Once you understand who the Gospels are speaking to and the, and the time frame of the end of days and that pre, mid and post are all true, which is why you can explain them in Scripture. When you see for the first time in your life who the seven churches of the end of days refer to and how they play out, it will blow your mind. And then the discourses come in to see how the discourses will play out in the end of days. When all these things begin to come together, you just say, oh, my goodness. And you, 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 you will probably have questions like I've had all, like throughout all of this. And that is, oh, my goodness, Lord. Why, like I was saying a moment ago, why, Lord, aren't more people coming? How is it we've got less than 10,000 people on, uh, on YouTube? And videos that are just getting a three, four thousand or so views per video. Why? I, I don't get it. For the long, I should say, let me qualify it. I should say for the longest time, I didn't get it. But I think in the last few months and, and more so even more recently, I'm understanding it more so. Now, as we get into this, I'm not going to say that I absolutely understand this is why. But when you see the evidence of the ministry in Scripture and in, and in, the, in the facts of things that have happened in history, <laughs> you're going to start to say, huh, huh. You see, because I've started to realize that there, there's a reason why they're not flocking. There's a reason why we can show it to brothers and sisters who are all over the place that we know that that are seeking greater understanding of revelation and of the end of days. And we could show it to them. And all we do is we offer to show it to them or we say, hey, a 30 minute video, just just spend 30 minutes in this video or or just read the first chapter of this book 
Here's the link. Read it for free. And they won't even do that. Brothers and sisters in Christ that won't even listen to another brother or sister wanting to share with them about the word. Not a, not a conversation and saying this led and the Lord said this and, and in the sky I saw the, I saw the stars move like this and the clouds made a sign. No, with scripture. 30 minutes of a Bible study in scripture to help answer questions every single one of you have had. And they just, they just want to rebuke us. There's, there, there's got to be a reason, right? There's got to be a reason. <clears throat> and I believe, as you're going to see through part of today's video, that I believe there's a reason. And I'm bringing it up now because time is short. Time is very short. And I believe it's going to most likely apply to, to a chunk of us at the ministry. Um, again, I am not saying, thus saith the Lord. I know many of you have had audibles from the Lord, have had other things that, that have led you to, to, to have this sense that you're, you're potentially a worker during the tribulation. Well, if you're part of this ministry, I'm going to show you connections that may lead you to be a little bit more prepared, more, more ready to understand that you just might very well be. And we're going to do it using scripture. We're going to do it using things in, in our modern day and things that happened uh, after Christ's death and resurrection. All right. But then <clears throat> we're also going to talk about the season and time. All right. We're going to talk about that Dana Coverstone dream again, like we did on uh, on the live show with Mike. And we're going to break this down with scripture because we've understood that that things that 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 dream talks about. We know that Dana Coverstone and those listening don't fully understand it because they don't know that pre, mid, and post is true. They don't know that it's two sets of seven years. They don't know <clears throat> that, the, that the white horse rider is here. The Son of Man is going to be here for 40 days. They don't understand those things. So we're going to break down his dream, that his recent one, and we're going to break it down to all of the things we've been talking about in scripture as to how it will all start and it was in his dream and it was his recent one we don't follow dana coverstone all the time in fact he got popular at the beginning i still believe that that the dream vision that he had at the beginning i believe that's coming here this fall and um i heard of one more uh, uh maybe a couple of years ago and then I hadn't heard of another one until this one just came up. I think it just happened, you know, uh, just a two, three, four days ago in June, something like that. So we're going to break that one down. And the timing couldn't be more perfect because we're, we're preparing and we're, 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 we're watching and understanding the season and time for June. And he got this at the beginning of June. And we can understand it. We could break it down precisely. So it's very exciting. So we're going to go into all of those things today and just see what the word has to tell us about it and, and prove out some of the other things with the word as well. All right. <clears throat> so where do I want to start? All right. Let me start right here. We're going to go into Genesis chapter 11. In Genesis chapter 11, this was something that Mike and Amish and some of our brothers and sisters over there at uh, Interrupts 165 found, oh man, uh, probably two years ago now. And, <coughs> excuse me, it was very interesting because in this ministry, right, like we've said before, if you know who Matthew, Mark, and Luke are speaking to, right, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the Synoptic Gospels. And John stands on his own. Well, to me, I... <laughs> I didn't know what any of that stuff meant. They're the synoptic ones and John by I, I still don't really know what it means synoptic. I, it's just a fancy word that I use and maybe it's some sort of harmony between them or something. I don't know. But I've always found it interesting in the revelation that we know is that <coughs> excuse me. That Matthew, Mark and Luke and John being separate is precisely what was revealed in this ministry. Matthew is to the house of Judah Mark is to the sleeping church or to the house of Israel, right? Where the Gentiles are grafted in. And Luke is to the bride of Christ, okay? 
that first bride, that, that Leah, Gentile bride of Christ. But John isn't a part of it. John really, you could say, speaks to the workers, okay? John has events, and yes, there's events for bride here, and the rapture here, and his return here. So John gives us the overall of the end days events, right? You guys have seen it, like chapters to years. He has 21 chapters. We're coming into the end of it right now, where we are right now. The end of September, right? At Tishri 1, boom, tribulation, the 14 years, is going to begin. Okay, it's going to begin even according to the Hebrew calendar from when they came into the land. But we'll get to that in a moment. And so what's happened is when you understand these things about Matthew, Mark and Luke and that John gives us the picture of everything taking place and speaks more specifically to workers. You see that Matthew, Mark and Luke, well, we know in the end, the first will be last and the last will be first which means in the end of days, it's gonna be Luke, then Mark, and then Matthew. And what do we know about these things? Well, we know that there's pre, there's mid, and there's post. So within the Synoptic Gospels, Luke is pre, Mark is mid, Matthew's post. Well, that's exactly right. Luke, when Christ was going to the cross, uh, Jesus was given a gorgeous white robe or a gorgeous, glorious robe, which also means white and clear and beautiful. Mark was arrayed uh, with Christ at the, uh, going to the cross, was arrayed in purple. And in Matthew, it was scarlet. See, there's, there's clearly contradictions just in the colors of what he was dressed in, you see. And so when you understand these things with the perspective of the pre, mid, and post, and, and the end of days, and understanding the timeline of these events, you can see that the first will be last, the last will be first. And it's related to the Synoptic Gospels. Now, why do I bring this up now? Well, because what they found a couple years ago, and we've talked about it in the past, but I'm bringing it up again because we're talking about this period of time of workers <clears throat> and why I believe there's something going on with this ministry in relation to this. Because when you see these connections, and you understand that there's only a few thousand people or several thousand people around the world, why are so many people refusing to want to even listen when these are mysteries of things they've been desiring to know for hundreds of years? I believe the answer lies in why we're receiving it and why it's such a small group, all right? I believe that's at least one of the reasons for what's happening. And what you come to find is that you see here in Genesis eleven twenty six, and Terah lived 70 years and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. So Abraham and his two brothers. So there were three sons. Wasn't that interesting? Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, Abram, or Abraham, right? His name will become Abraham. Nahor and Haran. <coughs> so it's like Luke, Mark, and Matthew. What do we find out about Matthew's group? High father. You see, because this is the father's group. Matthew, okay, the house of Judah. What do we know about Nahor? Nahor is Mark's group, which is referenced as the sleeping church. See, those that aren't ready, those that aren't watching, they're still caught up in the things of the world. They, they don't look at prophecy, the pastors, they don't understand it, and they just, so they just, they, they cower from it. They're supposed to teach the whole word, whether they properly understand it or not. They're supposed to teach all of the word and prepare their people, whether they're fully understanding or not. And so what happens? The church is asleep. That's what we mean by asleep. They're not being prepared. Now, is it the whole church? No, it's about 90% of the church worldwide. That's the Mark group that would represent Nahor. What does Nahor mean? Check it out. This is so awesome. When these guys found it, they were so excited when they shared it with me. It was awesome. It means snorer. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? We know that the house of Israel, which is the world, is referenced as the snorer, is referenced as the sleeping church, and his name means to be snoring. <laughs> it's so perfect, all right? Now, <clears throat> what's the other one? Haran. Now, here's what I want to explain to you. 
I'm not specifically here in relation to their names. I'm not speaking to the groups that are part of the pre-trib rapture, right? The, the escape that we call it. I'm not talking about the group that gets raptured in the great multitude at the end of seals, which is Mark's group. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm not speaking about Matthew's group when the Lord returns feet down about on the Mount of Olives. I'm referencing the, whoops, where'd I go? I'm referencing these guys as worker portions, okay? So you've got a group that is going to work during the millennial reign, as we know. You have another group that's going to work during trumpets for those sleeping guys. And you've got a group that's going to work during seals. Let me show you what I mean. I had a brother that wanted to cover this real quick, too. So I figured it'd be a, a great place to add this in because this is what we're talking about. So what do these three worker groups reference? Well, let's start with Luke, okay? Luke is this reference that I think many here within the ministry may be a part of. What this is here is the resurrection story of Luke. Remember, when you understand who the Gospels are speaking to and you see it with these end time eyes, the, the books that have been opening you understand more clearly these different groups being spoken to. <clears throat> and what we find here is the group in Luke that sits and the Lord gives them food and eats with them and so forth. We've covered them many times. We see that this group is given their, their instructions, right? Of what they're going to have to do. What, what do people call this? Um, uh, 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 the commission, all right? And he says to them um, in Luke 24, verse 46, he says, and he said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father, right? The Holy Ghost that comes on day 50 <clears throat> of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Okay? We know this group is the group that follows from the end of Luke and goes into Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, and so forth. So they're 40 days with the Son of Man. These are the disciples. These aren't the apostles. These are the disciples. <clears throat> and so, what do we see about these guys? Well, we see what their work and their commission was. They're going to begin from Jerusalem. It's about teaching repentance, remission of sins to be preached among all nations. They're going to receive the Holy Ghost at Pentecost, which we call Acts 2.0 this year, which I believe will be the first week of August. And if you went to John and you look at the resurrection story there, Jesus breathes the Holy Ghost on the apostles before these guys get the Holy Ghost at Pentecost. When you go to Mark's group, you see a different explanation. So the one in Luke, let me go back to Luke's real quick. The one here in Luke's group, which we have, which we've explained and broken down many times, is related, is the typology of the seals workers. They will be here with the Son of Man for 40 days. They'll receive the Holy Ghost, and they're going to be off working during seals while the apostles are doing their things too. All right? This group here is related to those who will put their necks on the line during the time of seals. And you see, it says there were two of them on the road to Emmaus. These are the two disciples. These are the two referenced, and he sits and he eats with them and so forth. These two that he has this confirmation, this, this, this conversation, I should say, with and telling them what's going to happen. Now, what do these two represent? We've explained many times that in the 144,000, Dan and Ephraim are missing. Okay, For Ephraim, his father Joseph steps in, and for Dan, uh, the Levite steps in. All right. And so we've broken it down recently in, in videos that these two lines are, I believe, 12,000 for Dan and 12,000 under Ephraim, okay? They're the missing 12 and 12 that would have been Dan and Ephraim from the 144, 
These are the seals workers, and I believe there's going to be 24,000 of them. Their commission is different than what you're going to read in Mark and Matthew. So now when we go to Mark, we know these guys have worked seals. When we come to Mark, we see something else with these guys, right? You come to Mark, and the first thing that happens is these two, right? These two groups from Luke, those disciple groups that were working seals, are coming to the 144. That's the typology here. It's coming to the 144 to let them know, hey, the Lord's coming. And do you know what happens? These guys, these guys refuse to believe the two witnesses, right? And not the two witnesses in that sense, but the two uh, sets of 12,000, however many remain, right? Remember, some are getting their necks put on the line. We know not all of them are going to die, but some are getting their necks put on the line, as well as people who come to believe during that time. They're also dying, of course, but we know there's probably going to be a few hundred million, maybe two, three, four hundred million plus that are dying for their faith during the time of seals. But these guys are a specific group that were chosen to work seals that are spreading the understanding, spreading the spirit through them. This is what's happening in these workers. And then this is like the end of the seal. So you're coming to the end of the sixth year and the Lord's coming and these guys go to tell them, the remaining ones are going to tell these 144,000. That's the typology of Mark's group. And then the Lord comes and what does he do? He unbraids on them. You know why? They didn't believe what the other groups had said. That those other two groups were telling them, nah, yeah, whatever, whatever. Why? You want to know why? Because they're the snorer. Remember, they they were a part of the sleeping church. They were a part of that worker group. Or sorry, they were they were a part of those that were there during seals. They may have been protected. They they may have been set aside in some sense, but they still didn't believe. And they're still not going to believe at the time of the Lord's coming. So the, the fact that <clears throat> not only is the time of seals the, the Nahor snorer, but so were the workers that are going to be chosen at the end of seals from among the snorers that are going to be chosen to work during the time of trumpets. Okay? That's why we see they were chosen from among men on the earth, okay? And they were sleeping. They, they, they weren't ready. That's why Jesus unbraids on them. He doesn't do that to Luke's group, <clears throat> nor does he do it to Matthew's group. And then look at what he tells them in their commission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, first of all, you don't see beginning in Jerusalem. That's where everything started, right? That would, that's, where, that's where Luke's group, that's where the seals workers are going to begin. They're going to begin before the seals even actually fully begin. Yes, the escape will happen. Yes, the 40 days of the Son of Man. But before that first attack on Israel happens, they will have already started from Israel, from Jerusalem. And then these guys have to preach the gospel to every creature because they're going to help bring in the great multitude rapture. You're going to see this in a moment. Okay, we're going to cover this a little bit later. This is the thing that this, that this group of the 144,000, we know that it's at the end of the six years of seals and right at the start of the seventh year of seals, these guys are sealed and what are they going to do? They're going to preach and help bring in the creature. That's the Mark group. That's the church that Christ came to save. And it says, and he that believe and is baptized shall be saved and he that believeth not shall be damned. This is all connected to Luke chapter, chapter three as well. And then he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Okay, now they're going to start working trumpets. And it says, and in my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues. And then what happens? We know at mid trumpets, because Satan is cast down, these guys are given additional powers. Just like Luke 10 says, and it says, and they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands, hands on the sick and they shall recover. This commission is very different than Luke's commission, as you could clearly, clearly see, because it's speaking to a different group. This is the group that is going to help in that seventh year of seals, and then they're going to work trumpets. And look at what the Lord says to them. Start uh, 19 and 20, last two verses of Mark. 
So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up to, into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. <clears throat> and, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the, the word with signs following. See, remember, they follow the Lord wheresoever he goes. Revelation 14, we know the Lord is one of the two witnesses. So he's going to be there with them as the high priest. All right. We talked about all these connections. So this is what, this is the, the beginning. When the seals workers that are remaining, that were chosen, that are remaining, come to these guys at the end of the six years of seals and say, hey, the Lord is coming. And they're like, nah, we don't believe you. They refuse to believe. And then the Lord shows up and he unbraids on them. Why? Because they were snorers as well. So out of the snores, a group that wasn't prepared like a snorer is being chosen then to work trumpets. Okay? So when we go back and we see that in Genesis 11, we saw that the second one was the snorer. Let's go to the first one with Matthew, which related to Abraham, and see what happens to Abraham. I'm, I'm saving the other one on purpose, all right? Listen to the great commission that you get in Matthew 28. And the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when he saw them, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. This is the same wording that you get at the seventh trumpet. Everything is now his. Go ye therefore and teach. See, no more, no more preaching, only teaching, because the whole world will now have seen him arrive. This is, this is at the start now of the seventh trumpet, okay? In that seventh year of trumpets, in that 14th year. Go ye and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Do you know why it says that? Because he's literally going to be here with them. He's going to be here with them until the end of the world, until the end of the millennial reign. So what do you think this group is working for? This group is working during the millennial reign. They're going to be what? They're going to represent the, they're going to represent the gates through which everybody's going to enter. And so many of you guys will remember this. <clears throat> we've spoken about this and we've talked about it on the live show. When we go to Revelation chapter 21, we see this new Jerusalem coming down from heaven from God, right? And the, the description is what? Well, we see that there's the foundations. The foundations are based on what? The 12 apostles. Well, we know the foundations are laid during seals. So who is responsible on the spiritual side of laying the foundation in Jerusalem? Okay, there's the spiritual side. It's not the disciples from Luke. It's the apostles from John. Remember the apostles in John's resurrection story, they were breathed on. They were breathed on right at the beginning of the 50 days. You see? These are the foundation layers. They're the ones for laying the foundation during seals. And then what do we have? Then you have the walls. Then you have the walls. So this is the group now that we were talking about. The first one, the foundation was laying, was related to John because it's the apostles. Okay. Another way to, to understand this too is even the very first group that is sealed, the very first group chosen to work during seals is going to be the apostles. And I believe that'll happen about the 14th, 15th of June. Sounds crazy to even say out loud, doesn't it? that the Lord will breathe, will choose, and however that will play out this time for these new modern-day apostles. But you see, then we skip Luke, and we go to Mark's group. And Mark's group was, was the, the ones that relate to the time of the wall. When does the wall get built? After the foundation is laid. The foundation is laid during trumpet, uh, during seals. The, the walls are built during trumpets. During the first half of trumpets, the, the walls are being rebuilt. The city and the temple on the foundation, it's all being rebuilt. And you see, 
it just so happens that their measurements are 144 cubits. So we have the foundation, seals work, a portion of seals workers, which are apostles. You've got the walls, which are trumpet workers, which are the 144,000. This is the mark group. And then what do you have? Well, then you've got the gates. And who do the 12 gates represent? They're the 12 tribes. Who are these 12 tribes represented? Where are they represent? They're the Matthew ones we just looked at. In Matthew 28, the Lord has returned. So what's going to happen during this group's great commission? The Lord has returned. All power is given unto him in heaven and on earth. They're only going out to teach because they don't need to preach because the world will know that he's here. And he's now with them until the end of the world because he's here for the millennial reign. So these guys are the ones going out letting people teaching of the ways of the Lord that are going to lead them to Jerusalem <laughs> to enter through those gates. So what do you have? Well, when New Jerusalem comes down at the end of the millennial reign, you have John's worker, right? The foundation layers. You've got Mark's workers, the walls, and you've got Matthew's workers from the millennial reign, which, which are the gates. Somebody's missing, isn't it? There's somebody missing. There's no Luke group. How come where are all the disciples workers from Luke's group? They're not here. And the reason they're not here is because they're right here. You see, where are they? Right here. This is where they are. And I saw the thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon his foreheads, uh, upon their foreheads <coughs> or in their hands, which means on, by the way. Okay. Or on their hands or lived and reigned. Uh, sorry. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. The, this is the first resurrection. Okay. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. We know who this group is. This group is without question, absolutely no hesitancy. They're Smyrna. We know they're Smyrna. Okay. It's those that overcome that shall not be hurt by the second death. Okay. It's those who will experience tribulation, those who put their life on the line. So what do we see? We saw that the John group was the foundation. We saw the Mark group works during trumpets, building the walls and the spiritual walls being built. And Matthew is during the millennial reign when those workers go out. And we see that they are New Jerusalem that comes down as a bride. Okay, We would call them that Rachel bride. And we shared in the last video how we know there's some within Mark, at least one, but maybe a, a line of them within Mark that fall away as workers. And the only way they could be saved again, because they've been sealed with the name of God, so they can't be lost. The Lord is going to have to do it again. You know what I'm talking about for them to be brought back because they cannot be lost. So we can see who this, who this John, Mark, Matthew and New Jerusalem coming down and, and they're representative of like a Rachel. You ever notice Rachel was given to Jacob, but when he was given to her, there wasn't yet a marriage. <laughs> there's no, there's no wedding spoken about with Rachel. It was Leah's wedding. All right. I believe that's what these guys are representing as, as a whole. But who's missing is Luke. So there's this, there's something going on with a Luke group that is very special to the Lord, but is separate from, from the, the, the wowness and the grandeur of, of, of New Jerusalem coming down 
represented by the workers of John, Mark, and Matthew during SEALs, trumpets, and the millennial reign. There's a group of SEALs workers that, that are given some, something different. That, you know, if you go look at Luke and, and you go into Luke 24, there's some incredible wording that we've talked about in the past. And it's right here. It says in Luke 20, uh, in Luke 24, starting in 44, it says, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses. That's the first five books of the Bible. And in the prophets. Okay? So in the first five books of the Bible. <laughs> Have we covered the first five books in the last couple of years, two, three years? Breaking down the revelation of the is to come in every one of these books? Absolutely. Do we know all of it? Of course not. What else? How about it says, and the prophets? Have we broken down understanding of in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, some of Amos, nah, not so much of Obadiah, it's really small, Jonah, Micah? little bit of Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, yes, Zechariah, yes. We have absolutely been breaking those down. Do we know them all? Every piece related? No, of course not. And in the Psalms, have we broken down the Psalms and the, the understanding of the is to come? Absolutely we have. Do we know it all perfectly? Of course not. But it sure seems like there's a group who is connected to the Luke workers who are going to be revealed things and understand things in each of those categories. It just so happens that's what's been revealed. These are the books that have opened to us in the last four plus years. It seems like he's going to come and seal up this group with the rest of the understanding to make it known during the time of seals while we're saving these people and to let them know what is happening. Listen to the next verse. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. That's exactly what we're talking about, isn't it? This is what we've been doing. The actual event? No, because we don't know everything. The Lord will open up the rest of these guys. And there's nothing spoken negatively about this group ever. He so loves this group that they're going to be the first ones to take part in the resurrection to dwell with him for a thousand years, ruling and reigning. That is wild. So can we get a little bit more insight on who these guys are? This, this Luke group that we're talking about? Well, this brings us back to the brothers. This is Mark, uh, sorry, this is Matthew and the millennial reign workers typology, right? That's why it's father, right? High father, the Lord will be here. And then you've got Nahor, the sleeping. We know why they're snoring. They're a part of the church, the workers that will go out. Even from, the, from the snores, they're going to be chosen. And then they're going to work during the millennial reign. I'm uh, sorry, sorry, during trumpets. And then we've got Haran. Who is Haran? Well, let's have a look at Haran. Haran's name means mountaineer. And it comes from 2022. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Comes from 2022. And look at what it means. It means a mountain, a range of hills. Okay? To loom up, to climb up a range of hills. Now, you might think in this ministry, what does that have to do? with 14ers right what does it have to do with a group of people that unbeknownst to me when i started calling people when i started saying hey 14ers i didn't do it because i knew anything about any of this stuff i'm about to share with you but i did it because of the revelation of the 14 years later on i was emailed things <coughs> about 14ers that I had never known of before. And so for those that are new, I'm gonna to touch on that, 
but mainly the point is to tie in greater understanding <coughs> of this group in relation to Haran. Haran is the focus of this first portion that we're talking about in this teaching. Because what we come to see next is some wording from Genesis 29. An incredible piece of scripture that we've gone to many times. And you're going to see, I'm going to get to that Haran portion in a bit. But we see some very interesting stuff here. And it says, Then the Lord went on his journey and came into the land of the people from the e uh, of the east. And he looked, and behold, a well. You're going to see how important this well is after how many times it's mentioned in two verses. And behold, a well <coughs> in the field. And lo, were three flocks of sheep lying by it for out of that well they watered the flocks and a great stone was upon the well's mouth and thither were all the flocks gathered and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth sounds familiar right like the stone rolled away from the lord and watered the sheep and put the stone again upon the well's, the, the well's mouth <coughs> in his place. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? My brethren, where are you from? And they said, Of Haran. They are of Haran. Hadn't really dawned on me before reading that. They are of Haran. So they're from the place of mountain ranges that would have been named after the person Haran. Okay, but Haran would be already dead. These, these are a group from there. And listen to what he says. And he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahor. Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. <clears throat> and he said unto them, is he well? And they said, he is well. You see? So those of Haran know those in the snoring church and say, hey, uh, is are, are they well? Oh, yeah, we know them. They're well. And behold, Rachel, his daughter cometh with the sheep. See what's going on? Who, who's Rachel? Well, it's during the time of seals, right? Or that beginning portion of tribulation. Right from the start. Who is a group outside of it? Well, there's Haran mentioned first. You see, what does the rest of the story go into talking about? Okay? Feeding the sheep, watering the sheep. Look at this. There were three flocks of sheep. Three flocks of sheep. Okay? You can think of like pre, mid, and post. But what have we taught about recently? We know <coughs> that there's the pre and then the mid. And then the post is what? Well, we know that there's a slipping and falling and sliding away that happens with uh, Ephraim, with a portion of Ephraim. And at the end of trumpets, they, they realize what they've done and they come back and the Lord brought no more punishment upon them. Those are the corners and gleanings. So you've got the weed harvest, pre, mid, and post, right? First fruits, main harvest, corners and gleaning. But they're still part of the flock of sheep. And it's Nahor. It is Nahor who is watering them. Nahor is watering three groups. And then when Rachel comes, but then listen to what, say, what it says. <coughs> In verse 7, and he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it time, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep and go feed them. See that? Who's the cattle? The cattle is Judah. It's not the time of Judah. It's the time of Israel. We've taught on this many times. Remember, if you go to Zechariah chapter 2, 
we find out about the cattle, right? The Lord says at uh, verse four, and said unto them, and said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited, inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. We've talked about this. We've showed it in a number of places. Even Jacob, Jacob worked, right? He worked for seven years, which we find out in the same place we were at. He works for seven years expecting to get Rachel, but gets Leah. Then he gets Rachel, but he's got to work seven more years for her. And then he works another six for cattle. That's trumpets. Until the end of 20 years, which is like the end of 14 years. And now the cattle is brought in. And you see, it wasn't time of cattle. It was time of sheep. And who's the one helping water and feed the sheep? Haran. So there's there's the first little additional thing that we get with this Haran connection as, as a separate group outside of the church. Interesting, isn't it? And so I start digging into finding things about the well and you see the Samaritan woman and it's talking about all these places. I don't know if, if this is from a book that I found and it's all about the well. Um, you know, in Genesis 21, God points to a well, uh, points out a well to Hagar. Genesis 21, Abraham makes uh, an oath of peace at his uh, with his neighbor at a well. Genesis 24, Rebecca at the well. Genesis 26, uh, what's another one? Genesis 29, Jacob meets Rachel at a well. Okay, where where are they here in 29? At the well. It's all at the well, at the well, at the well. <clears throat> so. I, I'm digging further into this and seeing these things about the well. So I go back or I go to this other piece of, uh, 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 sorry, I go now and we were talking about, in fact, we were talking about this in the, in the, uh, in the live show and it's so exciting. This that I'm about to share with you now is is so exciting some of you guys are going to just your jaws are going to hit the floor and you're going to freak out because this piece of of apocrypha was shared with us by our sister jackie a few days ago and when i saw it at first haran of course <laughs> never stood out to me and then it was as i was building on this and working on this that I realized this connection with Haran again. And I started looking at this more closely. And you want to talk about being excited now. This is from the Apocrypha of the Book of Jubilees. Now, what do I say and what have I said time and time and time again? We don't use the Apocrypha <coughs> to, to find something and make a whole thing around it. We prove things out and show it from Scripture and then are looking through things and you guys are looking through things and we find things in the Apocrypha that confirm and give greater detail to what we have already found in Scripture. And this, for those of you who didn't hear the live show on Interrupts 165, if you've been around for a while, you are going to love this all right and we're still connecting it to now we're still connecting it to haran we're still connecting it to to savan in this month of june this is found in chapter 44 of the book of jubilees and israel arose from haran from his house at the new moon of the third month okay <clears throat> what's the new moon of the third month watch this let's go to the new moon of the third month right here see this right here this is when it would be dark this is when they would see the first crescent where are we may 2022 may 31st 2022 when the crescent would be seen is exactly where this is talking about right here see Evening, oops, evening to evening, May 31st, 
was the beginning. This part right here is at the new moon <coughs> of the third month. And came by way of the well of oath. There's a well again. <coughs> and offered a sacrifice to the God of his father Isaac on the seventh of this month. So where would we be now? On the seventh of this month, evening to evening, the 6th of June. We're right here at the 5th of June. All right? Let's keep going. And Jacob remembered the dream. Remember he had dreamed at Bethel and feared to descend to go down to Egypt. And while he was thinking that he would send word to Joseph that he should come to him, that he would not go down, he remained there seven days. Now, what dream at Bethel did he remember? Well, this is where we go back from 29 of Genesis and we go into chapter 28. And what do we read? The Jacob's dream, okay? Jacob's dream that starts in Genesis 28 verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran went toward Haran and tarried. Remember, he put his head on the stone as a pillow. He dreamed this dream, saw the angels of God descending and ascending. He said, oh, my goodness. You know, this is certainly where the Lord is. He awoke from these things. He was freaked out. And what did he do in verse 19? And he called the name of that place Bethel. He called the name of that place Bethel. What did he remember? He remembered on the seventh day of that month, he remembered what he had dreamed at Bethel. So, of course, it's not difficult to understand. We know he's referring to something in Genesis 28. In Genesis 28, last verse 22, he says, And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou giveth me, shall giveth me, I will surely give thee the tenth unto thee. The tenth he's about to give. When we come into Genesis 29, we start to see this story and Haran and those, the, the ones who are feeding them, the ones who are watering the flock. And we get this story and we know that this story then goes on to talk about, goes on to talk about who? How he so wants <clears throat> uh, Rachel, right? He so wants Rachel. Listen to what verse 15 says of Genesis 29. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters, and the elder was Leah, and the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, right? Remember, it means wearied, okay? She's kind of weak and faint. That's that bride watching for the Lord, right? Lord, please. And what ends up happening? I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. Verse 20. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. They seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had for. Remember, we've talked about this a hundred times. We know that it would just flew by. It was so quick. It's like, the, it's like the portion of time we're in right now. These seven years flew by. The Holy Spirit has been working so hard to prepare the bride. To prepare the bride at the time of the first fruits of the wheat harvest of the Feast of Weeks. All right. And we've seen this. It's coming to an end. And he was so excited. And he says, give her to me now that I may go. My days are fulfilled that I may go now unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of, uh, of the place and made a feast. And Laban in the evening goes in unto her. And of course, we know he wakes up in the morning and he's like, you son of a gun, you switched her. You never gave me Rachel. <clears throat> and what does Laban say? Laban said, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Okay? 
we cannot, I cannot give you the younger one before the older one. We have understood this. We've talked about this many times, right? In fact, we have an incredible video of this revelation back here called Old Before New. And it was an incredible revelation <coughs> that there are two wheat harvests. One is called winter wheat, which is planted very late fall to very early winter. And so it takes root and then it grows during the spring and it is harvested at the feast of weeks. It is called old wheat. It is called winter wheat. And there's no waiting period for it. At winter wheat, once it is ready at the Feast of Weeks, it can be harvested and used right away. It is called old wheat. Not because it's old, but because it was planted first. It is the first before the younger. You following? And what is the new? The new is spring wheat. It is planted around the time of Passover, but it doesn't take root till after Passover. And it's ready to be harvested at the time of the fall feasts. And it gets harvested at the time of the fall feasts. <coughs> but as it gets harvested, it's not usable. It's not ready until the time of Passover, which we now know with greater clarity in relation to the great multitude rapture, it won't be connected to first Passover, but it will reference second Passover because of all the dead and coming from a far land. They're going to need the additional month. You following? We came to understand that it related to the feasts of the Lord. The Feast of Weeks is the first place for the first portion, right? For the older. The second one related to Passover, but it's second Passover with the clarity we've got since. It is the second feast of the Lord at Passover. Christ came at Passover to save this group that is the great multitude rapture that will come in fully at second Passover. Do you know why? Because when Christ came and fulfilled Passover for the world, he fulfilled it while Passover was in Aries. But where we live now, <coughs> the time we live now, it's not Aries. Aries is now the time of second Passover. So how fitting that when the rapture of the great multitude comes in, it will be in the seventh month of the seventh year. From Tishri, that is. All right. It comes in at second Passover. Because second Passover will be in Aries as he fulfilled first Passover in Aries when he was here. But because the progression of the sun, it's moved forward by a month these last 2,000 years. And then, of course, you've got the third feast of the Lord, which is tabernacles, which is going to be for the cattle, for Judah when the Lord returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives. So you've got feast of weeks, Passover, tabernacles the three feasts of the lord who goes first the older goes first the older is what the feast of weeks that is exactly what we revealed in this video and why is it so awesome because of what i'm going to show you right now remember bethel okay he had that dream we know it's the third month he made a sacrifice on the seventh day and then what did he do? He remained there seven days. Where would that put him remaining seven days? <clears throat> it brings us to right here. June 13th, the 14th day of Savan. And what happened after this day? I don't believe he observed anything on this day. I believe it was observed the following day. He waited seven more days, right? Look at what it says. He remained seven days. If he might see a vision, whether he should remain or go down. So he's wondering whether he should go down from this time 
to this time he's wondering whether he should go down to see joseph or if joseph is going to come up so he's waiting for the lord to let him know so he waits until this time to see once this day is over you're going to see what he does on this day right here listen to what he does he remained there seven days if he might see a vision whether he should remain or go down are you ready for this and he celebrated the harvest festival of the first fruits with old grain with old grain brothers and sisters do you see this do you see this right here and celebrated the harvest festival of first fruits with old grain this is a jaw dropper this is awesome this was such a blessing to receive i can't tell you how excited i was to understand that because we have taught it we had received the understanding of the old before the new we understood it with rachel and leah for years but what we didn't know is the differences with those weed harvests harvests and how they were harvested and now we know the three feasts of the lord and that the old is before new and this literally tells us the feast of weeks the third month the feast of weeks at the first fruits of the weed harvest it's the old grain first that should have every single one of you screaming in your seats, jumping out of your chairs. Because what I am telling you right now as we are speaking is this period of time right here. This period of time right to here. What? Revealed in Apocrypha 2,000 years old. Old grain. Told you it was going to be exciting. <clears throat> Told you. And what is he talking about taking out, remember? Surely I will give thee the tenth. I'm going to give you that 10% first. Who do we know is referenced? Who is that first fruits, first fruits, that tenth that goes first fruits? The old. Remember what happens? These these guys, they're they're watering, they're watering three groups, of which we know as a field is if you take this whole screen that I'm on, we know the first fruits is the 10% in the middle. It's the first fruits unto the Lord. That's the pre-trib. And the Apocrypha just confirmed what we'd been teaching, that the old goes first, and the old is who? The old is Leah. You can't have the younger before the older. You can't have the younger Rachel yet. You have to take Leah, who is the older, the firstborn. That's the first fruits, the 10%. When? I <laughs> just told you. Feast of weeks. Feast of weeks. What else do we know about the feast of weeks? Oh, you got it. What if we go to our chapters to years? And we go to the we go to Genesis. Uh no, where do we want to go? Uh da, 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 da. Where is it? Exodus. We go to Exodus. <laughs> we revealed on this chart for anybody that's new. This chart is about books in the in the scriptures in the Bible that have opened to us with end time understanding that have that have verses that have understanding within them that relate to events during the end of days. 
and I call them chapters to years. And, and Exodus is one of them. But Exodus goes in reverse. Oh, sure, the story goes from 19 to 34. But in the end of days, the revelation goes in reverse. And it's a fantastic story in the viewing of chapters to years. Of course, you can still understand things in their order going from, you know, from top to bottom. But when you're looking at it in chapters to years, we revealed, I don't know, a year, two years ago, two years, three years, that Exodus revealed itself in reverse. And we see that it's chapter 34 of Exodus. So if we go to chapter 34 of Exodus, what do you think we're going to find? Do you think maybe we're going to find something about this first fruits of the wheat harvest that we've talked about so many times? Of course. And thou shall observe. Didn't he say he observed it, right? That 14th, 15th day? Accomplish, do, make. The Feast of Weeks. What's the Feast of Weeks? It's the third month. Jubilee's told us, third month. And we know it's the third month. It's the month of Savan. The Feast of Weeks of the first fruits of the wheat harvest. But you're going to observe it. Uh, uh, and the Feast of Ingathering at the year's end. Right? So we see this one's related to the circuit of the sun. So this is why we say we're looking at this period here. <clears throat> but between this period and this period here is that seven days. Is this that Leah wedding? Okay? And then the Lord returns, and this is the beginning of the 40 days right here. So if we read the Gospel of John, when he breathes right here, the beginning of the 50-day count, when he breathes on the, the apostles, he breathes the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Ghost on them, and then he comes back on the eighth day. When he comes back on the eighth day in John, he meets with the apostles again, and then he meets with Luke's group. Then he meets with the Luke workers. And I'm wondering if the reason why I haven't been able to clearly see whether the bride is taken on day one or whether the bride is gone after the seventh day is maybe because the ministry has its part in the workers of Luke from Luke 24 that we shared earlier that are outside of John, Mark, and Matthew workers, but help bring in and have been helping to bring in this portion of the bride that, that are watering these groups for the pre, mid, and post. Of the of the wheat harvests of of the first fruits ten percent, of the of the of the the great multitude the the main harvest, and then helping with those corners and gleaning somehow at the end. That that Ephraim portion we said that happens later. Is this why I'm I'm not fully able to say? Is it day one the bride goes? or after the seventh, which would mean sometime on the eighth day. Maybe it's because this, this representation of what ministry revealed is a part of. But I want it to sink in for you. As I speak to you, we're the 5th of June. What I'm telling you about starts, give or take, 13th, 14th, somewhere in here, depending where you live on earth. Everything is about to change. Let's keep going. Let, remember this? Let, let's, let's solidify this again a little bit more with uh, Judges 15. Another chapter at a year, right? Another chapter at a year that we shared. And we see chapter 15 is just like Exodus 34, where the first fruits of the wheat harvest is, which relates to what? The old wheat, like the Apocrypha confirmed, that goes first at the time of the Feast of Weeks. We know that 
it was Rachel that he wanted. He wanted the younger before the older, but he had to get the older before the younger. And he didn't really like the older. In fact, we see in Genesis 29 that it says that he hated her. The Lord saw that she was hated. And so he opened her womb. <clears throat> well, we saw this the last time as well in Judges 15. But it came to pass within a while in the time of the wheat harvest. So you got to say, first of all, the first question has to be, well, what wheat harvest? Right? Winter wheat, spring wheat, right? Old wheat, new wheat. Well, it tells us. When you understand, it tells you. It says that Samson visited his wife with kid, with a kid, and he said, I will go in unto my wife into the chamber, but her father would, would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, I verily thought that thou utterly hated her. Sounds like Leah, doesn't it? Because it's a precise type and shadow. Therefore, I gave her to thy companion, right? We talked about this the other day. I gave her to your friend. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. This is the, this is the Leah and Rachel story. When is this Leah and Rachel story play out? Time of the wheat harvest. Who is, who is the older? The one that's hated. Who is the one that he really would like? The younger, fairer one. Who did he know that he got that he was supposed to get first? The older one. The what? The older one. The older one. When? At the feast of first fruits of the wheat harvest. When? In the third month. Connected to a group what? Connected to a group that's connected to Haran. Again. We got Haran in the Apocrypha. We got Haran in Genesis. We have Haran in the story of Rachel and, and Leah with Jacob. What is, this, what is this Haran portion all about? Let's go back and see this meaning again with Haran. Haran is a mountaineer, right? A hill, a mountain range, a, a range of hills that are mountains. <clears throat> so what happens if if we continue to to follow this storyline? I want you to remember those mountain ranges, all right? I'm leading you into it. Many of you already know, but for new people, you're going to say, "Oh my goodness." You see, what else do we have connected to these guys? We we know now that in this period of time of the first fruits wheat harvest, there's a worker group in here of seals outside of the apostles. They're the Luke group of workers. There, there's a connection to them helping wake up the bride. So there's a bride group and there's a worker group from them. Just like the Mark group had a group from the sleepers that will then work during trumpets. You following? So there's a group from the bride group that is chosen as workers to work during this time. But they were a part of the bride as well. But we keep seeing that Haran is, is, this, is this piece outside of that bride group. There's this separation with this Haran portion that helps the bride and, and helps those other portions of wheat. But they're also a part of it. And when we go to um when we go to luke chapter 20 this was an awesome find as well by our brother jared that shared it with me we've talked on this many many times and mike over at 165 did uh did a, a few videos on this or a couple of videos and teachings on this as well in the past and it's because when you know who the gospels are speaking to especially the luke mark matthew the synoptic gospels You'll understand why there's differences in wording. But what Jared found was even a, a better distinction within the wording. Because we have a video, for those that don't know, in the, um, I think it's, uh, if it's, it might be in the playlist, but it might not be there anymore. <clears throat> but you'll see it in the video section. And it's called, comma, and. 
the revelation of comma and you see comma with the word and it seems so simple but when we read scripture we tend to just read all right most gentiles just tend to read and and not catch these little details that video is all about the detail of comma and and so not only is there detail of comma and but knowing the differences within each gospel and why they're worded differently also helps you get more information so let's see what it says uh starting in 34 and jesus answering said unto them the children of this world marry and are given in marriage but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world now who are they that are to be accounted worthy who are they that shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world well we find them in genesis in uh, sorry in luke chapter 21. <clears throat> this is the escape of the bride of christ this is the pre-trib group being taken out it says watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man so they're going to escape everything meaning everything even listed in luke's discourse which means even that beginning stuff that's coming that we're going to get into after this they're even going to escape all those things and i'm going to show you who this group is i'm going to show you where this group is taken out in that dream vision that uh that dana that dana coverstone got you're going to see where this is you're going to understand where this is where this where this first fruits pre-trib wheat harvest of the old is taken out that's this group right here the accounted worthy so let's go back to luke 20. so what else do we see in 21. well in 21 it wasn't only about the accounted worthy in fact let's go back to it real quick it wasn't only that chapter isn't only about the accounted worthy it starts off by saying nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom but not yet right it says but before all these so before the red horse rider of nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom starts there's going to be a but before all these now in this but before all these where's the bride Where, where's that gentile old wheat gone she's already gone because we were told that she would escape all these things that shall come to pass this is what's coming okay this group right here is going to experience this stuff well who is this group that's going to experience this stuff look at what it says and you shall be betrayed uh both by parents and brethren and kinfolk and friends and some of you they shall cause to be put to death who is this some of you well first of all now we can see that there's two groups here there's the group that will experience none of it and there's a group here that's going to go through it of which some of them are going to be put to death what do we know about ephesus well ephesus is the typology that's connected it talks about the bad disciples or those who claim to be disciples but we know the typology being given is that in the end of days this is the john group this is the group that is going to be sealed at the beginning of the 50 days where the lord will breathe the holy ghost on them this is the beginning this is the chosen dis- uh, apostles that's that are coming the true good apostles not the false ones over all this time this is the reference to ephesus okay we show this very in an awesome way uh in the book okay ephesus this is the very beginning when the the beginning of this apostolic age will will come at the escape of the bride of christ and what do we see next after they're sealed and their portion is started which is going to be that seven to eight days before the lord returns for 40 days which will most likely be related to the 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 wedding portion maybe for leah right for seven days but look at what it says about smyrna who's smyrna smyrna is the next one to get sealed 
we know that the Smyrna workers are the ones when the Lord returns and begins his 40 days, this is the Luke group. These are the Luke workers related to Smyrna. Okay? And what happens to them? These are the ones being spoken about in Luke 24. Okay? I know thy poverty and thy tribulation, uh, and fear none of those things which, shall, which ye shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you, there it is again, into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days, but be faithful unto death, and I will give unto thee a crown of life. Remember those that shall not be hurt by the second death? This is Smyrna. That Luke group is Smyrna in chapter 21. It's the beginning when they will be going around with the Lord even for 40 days. When do we see that it happens? It happens before the nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, which is the red horse rider. Which means this is the portion of those 50 days before it goes nation against nation, before Israel's first attack. Which means it's during the time of the white horse rider. It is during the 40 days while the white horse rider is here. This is that group from Luke 24 that follows him wheresoever he goes. And then he warns them and says, hey, when you shall see Jerusalem being compassed with armies, know that the destruction, the desolation of it is at hand. And let everybody that's in Jerusalem flee. For these shall be the days of vengeance when all things will begin. Who are they? Smyrna. Who is this group in relation to Luke 20? <coughs> well, Luke 21, we just saw, has two groups. So what do we see? We see the group that is going to escape are those being taken out pre-trib, the old, who are the accounted worthy to obtain this that world. But then we have what? Comma and. It is a separation. It is like going to Revelation. And I'm, I'm going to show it. You guys know this very well. But for new people, I'm going to come right back to this. But I'm going to show you very clearly how to understand this. In Revelation 12, verse 14, this is when mid-trumpets, okay, three and a half years into trumpets, when they're going to be taken in the wilderness on the wings of an eagle, and they're going to be taken for a time, comma, and, times, comma, and, half a time. That means one, plus, okay, comma, plus, two, comma, plus, a half. For a total of three and a half years, one, plus two, plus a half, is three and a half years. So this group is going to be taken into the wilderness till the end of the 14 years. And when it's all said and done, then they're going to be brought back for the final jubilee and be restored into their land. Okay. However, when you go to Daniel chapter 12, you don't see the exact same wording. In verse uh, 7, how long shall this be? It says, right? How long shall this be? And it says that it shall be for a time, comma, times, comma, and a half. There's no and here. So there's no, there's no separation and adding. It's, it's just one, two, three, four, five, right? There's no addition. So this is saying one, two, plus a half. So is one separate from two? Yes. And the end is the addition. So you have one, two, and a half. This is two and a half years. Because we know Satan's time will be two and a half years of those final three and a half years. Because the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives at the end of 13 or at the start of the seventh year of trumpets. At the start of the seventh trumpet, when the, when the trumpet begins to sound, and in that final year is that days of Noah is the story of the ark and so on and so forth when the Lord destroys all the enemies and, and all that takes place. So now 
when we come back and we're looking at this comma n and we're, we want to see what this is telling us more clearly we see this accounted worthy there the escape the old right the pre-trib bride of christ being taken out but it, then it says also to obtain that world comma and the resurrection from the dead so there's a group who are accounted worthy of that world and a group that are of the resurrection of the dead that will neither marry nor be given in marriage neither can they die anymore for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of god the children of god are co-heirs right this word is used one time to be equal unto the angels it means they're going to be like angels they're going to be like those from the first creation that that gap theory portion you see they're going to be like them they're not going to be them they're going to be like them but what do we see there's two groups here there's the accounted worthy right that that 10 percent that gets taken out is the pre-trip bride but in luke 24 there was two groups there was there was the pre-trip group taken out of the accounted worthy but then there were those who were working who were putting their necks on the line those who will die having put their necks on the line and what did it say about this group it said that they're going to be the ones in the resurrection from the dead right who are the ones in the resurrection from the dead we saw them in luke chapter 20 okay those that will be resurrected who put their necks on the line were beheaded they're going to be resurrected to rule and reign they're part of the first resurrection and that's why the second death will have no power that it means nothing this second death isn't really even a death it's going to have no power over them you see so they will never die again both are part of the same group that will be equal unto angels and children of god this is a separate group from this group but they are all a part of that pre-trib ready watching bride of christ ready to go but we find out that this group is still a separate portion from the accounted worthy are they accounted worthy the other group this group of the dead of uh, resurrected that will be resurrected from the dead yes they're a part of them it's that's what it's saying they're, they're they're together here at the end but they're still separate this group goes right away and this one's staying to work this one's staying to put their necks on the line who is this group that stays to put their necks on the line <clears throat> we've showed this many times right greet priscilla and aquila aquila is the eagle he's the good side overcomer side of dan my helpers in christ jesus whom have for my life laid down their own necks you see those who put their necks on the line those who will be beheaded now not everybody in this group of workers is going to die okay those that will make it to the end will make it to the end and be with the lord and don't have to worry about being resurrected and those who have put their necks on the line will be resurrected. They're part of that first resurrection. And it says, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. See, and they're the first fruits. Now, why the churches of the Gentiles? Because they're working seals. They're working seals. You see all this plays out? All of this is in here. And this group, i believe is going to be right here chosen but now here's the thing is are 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 the apostles of john and the disciples later of luke going to be part of the wedding are they going to be taken to be part of the the accounted worthy in the wedding and then come back you know or or maybe they're like john when he was in when he was in prison and he saw these things in revelation his body sat there but it was like he was asleep and he got to go be a part of these things maybe that's what the apostles and the disciples will experience i don't believe they're going to be taken 
because they're not going to have resurrected bodies but they might spiritually be taken to be a part of it you see two groups in luke and john in the midst of them so a luke group accounted worthy john group receiving the holy ghost by the breathing of jesus upon them then after the seven days which means at the eighth day this is the lord returning this is the lord coming as the son of man for 40 days the world is going to think he's the antichrist but there's going to be a group of disciples following him that will believe on him and understand who he is this is the luke group that will put their necks on the line the apostles aren't putting their necks on the line they're 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 a different job theirs is this foundation that's being laid the spiritual foundation so let's let's keep moving this forward and see where this group is connected to let's see what what's connected to this group okay let's bring it back now to where it started with genesis 11. we've now identified these groups very clearly but Haran is still, we see it's connected to the beginning. We see it's all part of the time of the Feast of Weeks and all of this. But we've also identified in Luke, those who are connected to the Feast of Weeks who are being taken as the accounted worthy has a portion of them that remains that helped bring some of them in and then will remain to help bring in more during the time of the snores. And this Haran group has a reference as a group of mountaineers. Climb hill ranges, mountain ranges. Check this out. For those that haven't seen this before, check it out. Are you ready? There's a group of people around the world who are called 14ers. Can you believe it? I had no idea. I've told you guys this before. Many of you guys have seen this before. When I called people 14ers, when the ministry was getting going, and it was all because of this revelation of the 14 years, I've been calling everybody 14ers ever since, just as like our little catchphrase. There just so happens to be a group called 14ers that they spell like this, 14 E-R-S. I call I show I call ourselves like this. I spell it out as 14ers. This group of 14ers do you know what they are they're mountaineers a 14er is a mountain peak with an elevation of at least 14,000 feet do you think it's coincidence that there's a reference to a luke worker type referenced as a mountaineer referenced as a mountaineer and there's a group of people well known around the world who climb mountain peaks that are 14,000 feet or more who call themselves 14ers let me ask you this do you think the lord is just going to use a group of mountain climbers climbers who call themselves 14ers or do you think he's going to use a group of people on the earth who have a reference to themselves being called 14ers, preparing the bride as part of the bride, being called 14ers? Which one do you think it's gonna be? (laughs) Do you think it's just gonna be people that climb mountains around the world or in, in continental US just because they climb mountains? Or do you think maybe there was a hidden message in there for us as mountaineers who are 14ers. That's pretty wild, isn't it? It's pretty wild stuff. Well, it gets better than that because I'm going to show you something else. Many of you guys have seen this too, except maybe newer people. There's a term, this this was emailed to me uh, about a year, year and a half after I'd been calling everybody 14ers. I'd never heard of it before. And I always butcher this. It's Greek. And it says, uh, 
quattro <laughs> quattro decimanism <laughs> see i butcher it every time okay what does it mean 14th they're called 14thers did you hear that 14thers let me read this to you 14thers that's what i'm going to tell you okay 14thers was mainly popular in asia minor polycarp who is like other uh, Asiatics, kept Easter on the 14th day. Polycarp claimed that this practice came from the Apostle John. Okay? Some of the Mantinists were also 14ers, preferred to celebrate Easter on the Hebrew calendar date of the 14th of Nisan, regardless of the day of the week it landed on. It is unclear if the Ebionites could be deemed 14ers. However, they probably still observe the Passover in addition to other Jewish festivals. Polycarp and others had had 14er views. By the fourth century, the influence of 14ers became smaller. Later, the 14ers would be persecuted. Later on, the 14ers would be persecuted. Do you know who persecuted them? The church. The church persecuted them. Rome persecuted them because they refused to go with Easter and, dis- and chose to follow instead the word of God. It says the 14er controversy arose because Christians in the churches of Jerusalem and Asia Minor observed Passover on the 14th day, on the 14th of the first month of D, of Nisan no matter the day of the week on which it occurred while the churches in and around Rome changed to the practice of celebrating Easter always on the Sunday following the first moon allowing the vernal equinox calling it the day of resurrection of our savior the difference turned into an ecclesiastical controversy when the practice was condemned by snods of bishops you see that there was a group (coughs) of 14thers who stood by the word of truth the word of god that regardless of when the 14th day of nisan was during the week They wouldn't change it just because Rome said so. Do you know that in this ministry, even though the church and the world tells us, hey, it's only seven years, hey, learn everything from Matthew's foundation, that regardless of what we were told, ours isn't about the 14th day. It's about the 14 years. Do you know how many times in scripture we show that days of what was is a future typology of years? And here it just so happens there was a group that was adamantly following the truth of scripture and would observe the 14th day regardless of the cost. And now in the time of the end, there's a group of 14ers who will adamantly follow the word of God because you cannot unsee it when you understand it, are sticking to the truth of the revelation being revealed of the 14 years. They were called in Latin, 14thers. There's a group of people that climb mountain peaks, 14,000 feet that are called 14ers. And we know within the end time seven churches, This group that is being persecuted and the one that was reflected there was the church of Smyrna. Do you realize it was the church of Smyrna? Do you know who was over this church of Smyrna? Polycarp. Who was Polycarp? Listen to this. The practice had been followed by Polycarp, who was a disciple of John the Apostle, Bishop of Smyrna. Bishop of Smyrna. And the time frame was 69 to 155 BC, but uh, uh, AD, but it also went beyond that. 
You see, when you look at these these a these year ranges, it's it's debatable time frames. All right, where would this be? Right in the time of Smyrna. What began for them? Persecution. What begins the time of Smyrna? What begins the time of Smyrna? At the beginning of the forty days. What's the what's the beginning time of the forty days? Somewhere where there where there's persecution that comes at the beginning, that will start right away against the Smyrna group. Oh, you mean like you mean like those? But before all these, they're going to be persecuting you, delivering you up into prison, and some of you they're going to cause to be put to death. You mean like this group, who is? directly related to everything we're talking about the timing the people <laughs> literally a group called 14thers related to smyrna that is that is related to luke and luke's workers that is outside of john mark and matthew workers Prepare your hearts, brothers and sisters. <laughs> you just might be working if you're understanding what we've been sharing. If you've been following the revelations. And I say even be prepared because look at this. We just read this, right? Because by the 4th century, the influence of 14ers became smaller. Later, 14ers would be persecuted. Do you know why that is? You see what comes next? The time of Pergamum? The time of Pergamum is the time when the fleeing into the wilderness comes. You know what time this is? This is about two and a half years into seals. In the revelation of the end time seven churches. This is the time when the Antichrist gets his power to then continue 42 months. This is about two and a half years into tribulation. This is about the time of Passover in a little over... Two and a half years from now. Yep. In like two and three quarter years, during World War III, all of this took out, and then the Antichrist is going to step forward. This wilderness period of fleeing right here is Mark's discourse at the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel at the time of the Antichrist, who is the typology of Constantine here. Look at the period of time. All right, about the 400s. So what's happening? Smyrna, those workers are being persecuted, but what are they doing with the apostles? They're help bringing in, they're help waking up the church during the first portion of seals to the greatest revival in all of human history. But then what happens? Antichrist gets his power to continue 42 months. World War III settles down. And it's the time of Mark's fleeing into the wilderness from his discourse. And who is a part of that? Luke's group. Remember, they're working during seals. What did this say? What's the typology of what literally happened in history? By the 4th century, the influence of the 14ers started to lessen. Why did they start to lessen? during this 400 period of time in history it was constantine in the is to come it's the antichrist it's the time now to flee into the wilderness and what happened to them what then happened to the 14ers later the 14ers would even uh, would even would be even persecuted persecuted and killed persecuted and killed what do you think happens during this time it's the witnesses it's it's smyrna it's the eagles it's the it's the priscilla and aquilas who have put their necks on the line who were they 14thers 14thers like Priscilla and Aquila putting their necks on the line. The line of eagles. Some shall be put to death. The Luke workers. 
to to which there's a group around the world that climb mountain peaks like the mountain of the Lord who are called 14ers to a group or specifically related to a brother of Adam, uh, of Abraham who is called the mountaineer do you know who ends up dying first between Matthew's group, Mark's group, and Luke's group? You got it. Now these are the generations of Terah. That's the father. Terah begat Abraham, Nahar, and Haran. And Haran, see, interesting. Why don't they talk about Abraham and Nahar? No, it starts with Haran. And Haran begat Lot. Isn't that interesting? And Haran begat Lot. Do you know why that's interesting? Some of you who have been around for a while will know. Because Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17 down here in 25, right? He's going to be as lightning from one end unto the other. But first, he says, right? This is when he returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives. But it says in 25, but first. This is exactly the timing of Luke chapter 24. Uh, sorry, of Luke's discourse chapter 21, which is same as Luke 24 in the typology of workers. But he says, but first, must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation? For how long? During the 40 days as it was in the days of Noah. This is the 40 days of Luke chapter 24 when the Son of Man will be here. They ate and drank, married and were given in marriage. Until the day Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. He's talking about it beginning and the 40 days, excuse me, of the Son of Man during a time when they're marrying and given in marriage. Let me show you something. June continues to be the most popular month to get married. Huh. You don't say. <laughs> It's just perfect, isn't it? Well, let's take it a step further. Because of COVID, it helped make it what? Get ready for a wedding boom in 2022. There will be more weddings in the United States and probably globally in 2022 than in any year since 1984. Almost 40 years. Do you know why? Well, because of COVID. But do you want to know the greater reason why? Because the Bible said so. Because the Bible said so. When the Son of Man comes to begin his 40 days, as the days of Noah and the 40 days of the, for the 40 days of the Son of Man, it'll be a time when there'll be more marriages than ever going on. And when this period comes to an end, those workers that were where, there with him with Luke and the persecution beginning, right? And then what? They go out to work SEALs. When SEALs comes to an end, that group helps bring in who? The great multitude rapture. Who are they? Luke 17, verse 28. This is, this is now talking about the end of SEALs. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot. You ready for this? They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold. Notice how the bought and sold is different than the rest. When do they buy and sell during tribulation? When does buying and selling become an issue during tribulation? You got it, during seals, you see? There it is, number 59, G59 and G4453. Let me just prove it to you. Let's go to Revelation 13. Antichrist gets his power to continue 42 months. The beast shows up, right? The second beast, the, anti, uh, the false prophet, gets everybody to start worship, worshiping. And this is now when the fleeing must happen. Why? Because now it's the time of the mark of the beast. Who's here during the time of the mark of the beast? The seals workers working to bring in Lot's group, working to bring in the sleeping church. Remember, they never took the mark. Remember the seals workers, they never took the mark. They get beheaded. 
And what does it say? For those that what? Buy G59 or sell G4453. Because it is this seals worker group, the mark, I'm uh, sorry, the Luke group working during the time of seals that will be with the Lord for the 40 days who will then go out during seals to wake up and prepare and to keep people from the buying and the selling. You see? So why do you think the connection all the way back from Genesis to Revelation brings us back to Genesis? Do we see that it was Haran, the chosen seals workers, that begat Lot, that brought about Lot. Hello. And then what? And Haran died. He even died before his father Terah in the land of his captivity in Ur of Chaldee. You see? And where is Ur? Ur of Chaldee comes from G, uh, Hebrews 2.17 which means the flame of God, the light of God, the flame of God. You see, like gold in French, all oh, gold, that first position. Tish, uh, uh, um, Savan. Do you know what all this is connected to as well? For those of you that have been wondering, seeing 222. See that? There's the number it comes from. And it's the flame of God, Uriel. And it's two. Two, two. Haran dies first along the way. I told you this is going to be some freaky stuff. The connections, guys, are over the top. And remember this from the Gospel of Thomas that we talked about? The disciples, that's the Luke group, said to Jesus, Tell us how our end will be. Jesus said, have you discovered then the beginning? What's the beginning? Savan, the third month, the ox, Taurus is the beginning. That you look for the end? Have you discovered the beginning to understand the end? Yes, we have. For where the beginning is, there will the end be. Blessed is he who will take his place in the beginning. He will know the end and will not experience death. Even the beheading guys, even those dying for the Lord, we still won't experience death. You realize that, right? You got to remember in Luke 21, there are those who will not taste of death at all. Right? They're the bridegroom, the accounted worthy taken. But then there are those who will work for the Lord, as we know. And as they begin to work for the Lord, listen to what it says. Those who have put their necks on the line, listen to what he tells them. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, Luke 21, verse 17 through 19. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience, possess you your souls. Not a hair on your head will perish. You see? There's, it's all connected to this group. It's all connected to the portion of the bride. And it's all connected to June. In the 74 years completing to the house of Israel, to, to Israel coming into the land and knowing the truth of the season and time we're in. This is just awesome. Now, I wanted to build up in all of that for you so you guys can really understand that it's probably a good idea to prepare your hearts, have your minds ready, your spirits ready. You know, I think some people say, well, I would really like to be able to have these powers to, to wake up my family. I don't think that's what's going to happen. I believe peop, this, this group 
will be sent to different parts of the world. I believe we might even be all brought, as it says to this group, to Jerusalem. Do I believe everybody in the ministry is a worker? No. Do I know? No. Do I know that anybody really is? No. I was simply trying to show you to prepare you because there is something that's been happening in this ministry for four and a half years or so that is the revelation of the end of days the revelation of the end of book of the uh, of the end of days and the open books and there's a connection with this worker group outside of the harvest that are mountaineers that are smyrna that are 14ers that put their necks on the line and I know of only one group on earth that has those qualifications. <laughs> so it's pretty, it's pretty freaky, right? It's pretty freaky. So just have your hearts ready, have your spirits ready. But I don't believe the Lord will have you do anything you don't want to do. All right? Just know that there's a great blessing that's coming with it. An incredible blessing that's coming with it. All right? Now... This is a great lead in because now you're going to see this whole beginning in these things that we've been talking about for a long time. You know, you're going to see things now about this one right here, the stone's throw. This is like five, six months old, but we've been talking about this for probably three years or more. We know that it's connected now to the beginning. We've known it for a while. Well, I don't believe most people out in the world do understand it. But what you're going to see is it's beyond this stone's throw that we have understood here in this ministry for a long time. It's the order and the information of everything that he speaks in it. And I'm going to blow your mind in showing you how it's connected to the month of June and where we are and what I've already led you in with the harvest and the workers to the end of seal. Excuse me, to the end of seals. Listen to this about what I was seeing, and then let's read the interpretation. Um, I dreamt that I was standing in an open field and looking west in broad daylight in the sun at high noon. And there was a compass in my right palm that was facing up and pointed west, and that's how I knew what direction I was facing. And there was a silver-colored straight metal rod or staff in my left hand. It was touching the ground, and it went at least a foot above my head. I'm about five, six and a half, so it was up to about almost about seven, you know, six and a half feet, seven feet tall. In my <laughs> I can't resist. I'm sorry. You know, the little guys like him, I'm five, six as well. So I always say five, six and a half. So I thought it was funny how he said five, six and a half. We always say that. <laughs> left hand. So my right hand, I got the compass looking up, pointing west, and the staff that's in my left hand. I was watching what appeared to be a large stone in the middle of the air. It seemed to be at a very high altitude, and it seemed bigger than it should. It was like looking at the moon when it's way too close to the earth, or it seems really, really big. But this stone was huge. First of all, did you hear that? He said. It was, it was a huge stone, and this stone was like the size of the moon. Like It, it was huge, it looked like. Well, we're, if I remember, we're going to talk about a little clip in this video too from about 6.35 to 8.20 where he talks about what he was told by scientist friends that are coming in the second to the third week of June. Precisely where we've been talking about it for years and especially for the last several, several months, all right? Huge and out of place, did not look like it belonged there. And it was almost like a square. And there was a large round hole drilled near the top of it. And this thing was thick. It was miles and mi probably hundreds of miles wide. Uh, in my mind, I thought maybe I'm seeing the, uh, the, the walls of the city uh, mentioned in the New Jerusalem and, and, and in Revelation. But it was huge. It had a large hole drilled to it. And what appeared to be a streamer, it looked like a streamer like you see a tail on a kite or something like that tied. It was tied through the stone. It was very blurry. I began walking uh, west through a very, very vast, empty field that seemed as if a combine had just gone through. So everything had been harvested. I was seeing the... Uh, I, I... Did you hear that? He's going to describe it a bit more. So he sees this stone coming, and it's got this huge, miles-wide <clears throat> ribbon attached to it, and he's going to explain it, and it stretches miles and miles all the way into the dark of space. Okay? But... As he sees this coming, what does he say? He says he sees a field as if it's been harvested. As if it's been harvested. 
And this is why I have said, <clears throat> I believe, and I've talked about the stone's throw, I believe it's going to be seen here. Okay? If it's seen here, then I believe the escape is, as I believed, after seven days on the 8th and not necessarily up here. Now, you got to understand that when he sees this stone's throw, he sees this stone and the harvest, some, a field has already been harvested. He says the combines have gone through. So there might just be something to this. It might still be that the bride is gone first. And as he was walking west, you know, he, he sees the stone, he sees the stone coming. And as he's walking west, what happens? He says he sees fields that were already harvested. So it still might line up to being at the beginning. And it's because at this stone's throw, maybe that's when the stone is thrown. But we know it's not going to come right away. We've talked about that many times. There's the stone's throw and it's coming and it's coming. But the bride won't experience it. I've believed that the bride will see it. Okay, and that's why for me, this is possible over here, but I believe the stone's throw is connected to the 19th of June. And that what will happen is we will see the stone's throw and we'll see the stone's throw and men's hearts will fail them for fear. And as it's about to hit, boom, the bride is gone and the 40 days of the son of man would begin. So I'm still not sure in looking at it, as I've said, Maybe it's here because the field is already is already passed, or he mentions seeing the stones throw first, and then as he's seeing it and he's going west, then he sees that there's been a harvest. So it still could be either or, but it's right exactly in the timing we've been talking about. He sees the stones throw, he sees the stone coming, and he sees that there's been a harvest already. I'm from, I'm, a I'm from Indiana. So after the combines would go through, you'd see those bottom stalks of corn about maybe up eight, eight inches to a foot tall where they'd been harvested. It looked like that. Uh, the grass in most places was being healthy, but where it had been cut, it was browning and it started to look dead. And the stone. You see, and where it was cut, it was already browning. So he sees other healthy, untouched, and then he sees a portion that was cut. He sees a portion that was cut and it's already kind of brown. So you see, you hear something like this and I start to think, hmm, huh, <laughs> maybe the bride did go right away. And maybe the ones that are seeing this stone's throw are the seals workers. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's Luke chapter 21. You see, if, if the bride, the accounted worthy is that group taken out from around the world that are all taken out, and and those that are remaining as workers that we've been talking about maybe it's not the bride who's going to see it all maybe it's the workers you see and then jerusalem shall be compassed about and all these things and it says and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the seas, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. You hear that? Men's hearts failing them for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory and when these things begin to come to pass then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh see when these things begin so what did he say he saw the stone then he sees this portion of a of a of a field harvested And then what's coming? It's still coming. You see, when these things begin, boom, 
the accounted worthy are gone. And then it says, and men's hearts are failing them for fear of looking after these things that are coming upon the earth. What's he talking about? <clears throat> the stone's throw. It's all in order so far. Let's keep going. The moon suddenly began to descend, but did not have a fiery entry. Like if you see a, the, when the space shuttle came or rockets came in, you see that fiery entry. There was no fire on this at all. There was no wave disruptions in the sky, so to speak. Nor was there any sound. So no fire in the atmosphere, no entry point. There was no uh, sound except the whipping of what appeared to be now a rope. I can see now this was a huge rope. Uh, probably hundreds of feet wide that had gone through this this big stone. Um, it made a sound like plastic that was not secured around cargo on a truck going down the highway. There's a Tyson chicken factory about 12 miles from where I live. And so every day I see trucks go by full of chickens with a plastic wrap, and when they're going fast, you hear that plastic. That's what it sounded like. And now the stone was falling very quickly, and I could actually feel wind coming off of it. Uh, and then you began to realize that it was like that whoosh sound coming. And it was then that I realized I was as far west as I could be. I was literally standing in California, looking off of the shore into the shoreline of the Pacific Ocean. And I saw a sign that said Pacific Ocean, so that's how I knew where I was. I then realized that the stone seemed to be about the size of Texas, and it was shadowing over the entire western half of the United States. As it fell, I could hear the whipping of the rope behind it, and I could also see it was trailing all the way back to the line of the black outer space way up in the sky. And the rope appeared to be miles and miles wide. It was impossible to tell how wide it was. Then this stone hit in the middle of the ocean, but there was no violent tsunami-like blast. There was no, no nothing crazy. It, it hit as hard as it could, but it just began to sink, wobble kind of slowly into the water, and then it began to sink. Now, at this point, the broad daylight that I was seeing faded over the next few minutes of the dream, and I saw the rope falling from the sky, and it formed like a circle around the United States of America. Mexico and Canada were not in the mix of what I saw. I saw the rope as the stone's going down. There's still rope coming out of the ocean, still rope in the sky. And it makes its way like a circle around America. And as the stone sank, the rope tightened around the shores of the country until the Midwest appeared to be having a choking face and was having trouble breathing. It was like I saw a face going <gasps> like, like it couldn't breathe. There were no arms or hands. I just saw a face restricted trying to, trying to breathe. And I could hear a heartbeat. This was a very, very loud heartbeat that was it was not steady. It was choppy. It was violent. It wasn't there was definitely some type of arrhythmia going on. And then I heard the millstone hit the bottom of the ocean. I could hear it. It was like a sonar uh, dull thud, but I knew it hit the bottom of the ocean. And at that point, the Midwest took a deep breath. That face that I saw took a deep breath as the noose around the nation loosened slightly. There was a smile and a look of relief on that face in the Midwest. Then I saw the man's face that I see so often. It was superimposed over. It suddenly went from the, just a, a face of, of someone, uh, uh, just a face that was having trouble breathing, to the face of the man. He took a deep breath, and then he spoke these words. This is for the slaughter of and the hands that shed innocent blood. I then saw the stone sitting on the ocean floor, and I saw this hand, this big, huge hand that rushed down through the water, grabbed that stone, which I'm, I'm going to call a millstone, and it pushed that rock through the mantle violently see that and pushed that stone through the mantle out in the ocean do you know what that is brothers and sisters <clears throat> i think you do right we've shared it here in this ministry so many times that it's all part of the beginning of tribulation what happens when that stone is thrown who who's the one that throws that stone we know jesus throws that stone right First of all, in fact, let's go back to Luke first in chapter 22, where we discovered the, all of this revelation of the stone's throw. We know that Jesus, in 20, Luke 22, verse 41, it's only found in Luke before the typology of his death and resurrection, which is what? What is the period of time connected to the resurrection in Luke's end time typology of the end of days right here this is when this is when the hundred uh, uh, uh this is when the seals workers of luke 24 are chosen the 40 days of the son of man starting this is luke 24 so if you go to luke 22 which is the story that's the, to the third day you understand that it's connected then to the 20th of savan or the 19th of june so this is what that weak period so this stone's throw the stone's throw landing the stone's throw being smashed 
into the crust of the earth what have we been teaching is going to come from this stone's cast this stone's throw right this stone's throw is the same one that jesus told us in john chapter 8. see the gentile adulterous bride uh typology who is standing before the lord and the lord is like on on bent knee writing on on the ground everybody leaves and it's him bent over and her as he looks up at her it's like a wedding proposal right there and they want a stoner and jesus says only he who is without sin can cast the first stone see jesus is the one that's going to cast the first stone he's going to cast the first stone while she's still here you see this is how it plays out where is john chapter 8 we know this well where's john chapter 8 bam right at the beginning as it all is about to start so when we follow this through and we see that what else is connected to this time psalms as we know chapter 18. <clears throat> we go to psalms chapter 18 and we see uh, um sorrows of death compassed me sorrows of hell compassed me about uh verse 6 in my distress i called upon the lord and cried unto my god he heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even to his ears and the earth shook and trembled and the foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth there went up smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured coals were kindled by it he bowed the heavens and also uh, also and came down and darkness was under his feet remember that because of the size of this thing it's going to be like darkness over part of the world then he's coming down and what ends up happening he's going to smash that rock into the crust of the earth okay he rides upon a cherub he made darkness his secret place uh his pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies you see darkness was over that section coals of fire listen to verse 15 then the channels of waters were seen and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke o lord at the blasting of the breath of thy nostrils then what does it say he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me for they were too strong they prevented me in the day of my calamity and then it says verse 19 and he brought me forth also into a large place he delivered me because he delighted in me the lord rewarded me according to the righteousness uh, according to my righteousness according to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me now the question is is this the bride that he's saving here or is it the luke workers i believe it's sounding more and more like the luke workers if you follow even the line of conversation of what he saw that dana saw you saw that before it went into the water you saw that before the channels of the earth were seen at this ripping apart of the foundation of the crust and this violent that's going to come from it we saw that the harvest that the bride was already gone you see so then what happens if this is when it lands and this chaos takes place he's coming to save who out of the waters his workers the workers and that would begin the time of what the 40 days of the son of man do you know that the 40 days of the son of man we have taught on this many times for those that are new the 40 days of the son of man it's the white horse rider it is the white horse rider who is the son of man we've explained it we've shown it many times all right we've shown that it relates to to uh the travailing in birth the travailing which is a period of time of 40 days in relation to the end of days understanding it is this conquering and to conquer this waking up 
the people, the bride has been taken. Chaos is starting to reign on the earth. And he's coming to wake them up. And those seals workers that are with him, that he's rescuing as well. Well, look what happens. Do you guys know, for those that haven't been around for long, do you guys know that the Muslims also know there's somebody coming for 40 days? We've talked on this many times here in this ministry. The In Muslim eschatology, they believe there's a guy called the Dajjal. They think, they call him the, the false Christ. They think he's the Christian antichrist. So you see, the Muslims are looking for a guy coming for 40 days at the beginning of it all. And that when he comes, he's going to do things that are so much like what Christ did, it's going to be hard to distinguish between them. Yeah, no kidding. If the Muslims are calling this guy the Antichrist who will be here for 40 days, don't you think maybe you might want to consider who it really is? Because you know what the Christians are going to do that are left? The sleeping church? They're going to say, we were told the Antichrist comes first. Hello. They're going to fall in line with the, with the Muslims. And they're going to believe that this is the Antichrist. Until the Antichrist is gone after 40 days. Listen to what they say the Antichrist can do. It says, furthermore, uh, he will be assisted by an army of demons. That's just their eschatology. Of course, it's Christ. Of course, he won't. Nevertheless, the most reliable supporters will be the Jews to whom he will be the incarnation of God. The Dajjal will be able to perform miracles such as healing the sick, raising the dead. It says, although supported by devilish followers. Yeah, sure. It's the devil that can raise all these people from the dead. It's all the demons that can raise these people from the dead. This is the, this is the dead giveaway that it's actually Christ. Causing the earth to grow res, uh, vegetation, causing livestock to prosper and to die, and stopping the sun's movement. Listen to what they say. His miracles will resemble those by Issa. This is who they call, this is what the Muslims call Jesus' name. His miracles will resemble those performed by Jesus. But, 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 but don't be deceived. He's not going to be Jesus. You see, the Muslims, the, the enemy has already prepared his people to not recognize Christ when he comes. But the church, in being taught from Matthew all their lives, think that the Antichrist is coming first. And so when all of this begins, and the white horse rider shows up for 40 days, we all know why this wording of Luke 17 says that he is going to be rejected for the days of Noah. He's going to be rejected during this time that will start during the time of marrying and giving in marriage, during this time of June when all the weddings take place and marriages are taking place more than ever before in almost 30 year, uh, almost 40 years. You see, he's going to be rejected again because the world has no idea that the Son of Man is coming to warn for 40 days as he said he would in Luke 11 when he said he would be as Jonah was, a sign for 40 days as Jonah was. The Muslims, the enemy through the Muslims have preempted them build, uh, believing in the coming Messiah during the 40 days by telling them it will be the Dajjal, the false prophet, the false Christ. We know the truth. Listen to what he says next. That rope tightened real quickly around the nation's throat. I saw violent earthquakes. I saw uh, smoke rolling up as that last... See that? Violent earthquakes, smoke billowing out, billowing out. What is it? Psalms 18. Psalms 18 will take place during this period of time right here. All within the wheelhouse of everything we've been talking about for a few years. Breath was taken. I saw the eyes kind of get bigger. You could tell this thing was being choked. But what got my attention was the speed in which the nation seemed to die. I watched it. 
this violent hand pushes that, that, that rock through the mantle and it just, like a, like a zip line, just real quick, just poof, and that was it. Then I saw a horse, a white horse and a rider on it dressed in green and white. Hello. Then I saw the rider on the white horse. When do we say the rider on the white horse shows up? Right here. The white horse rider who will begin his 40 days, who will be with the Luke group, the disciples following him, receiving the understanding as Luke 24 shared. Right on time. In the midst of this stone's throw that we have been teaching here, as we said, would then follow from a harvest, a stone's throw, and the 40 days of the Son of Man of the white horse rider. And it was the man. He pointed with his right hand to the destruction and he said, I keep my word and I will be faithful to keep my word as it regards the blessing and the curse. There is not much time to work and those that know, know this deeply. Did you hear that? And then there's not much time to work. So the white horse rider comes here. Those other events we've explained have taken place. And the white horse rider says, I will keep my promise against the wicked and against the good. But then he says, and it's now time to work and there's not much time. And those who know, know. Who's a group of people who know? Who's a group of people who are aware of these things? who have understood these things and are revealing them, being given this revelation of the open book. A group who knows. Regards the blessing and the curse. There is not much time to work, and those that know, know this deeply. Get busy, stay busy, and know that I'm coming back very soon. And the horse- And know that I am coming back very soon. Do you know why, brothers and sisters? Because we know the Lord comes back at the end of the sixth year of seals, the start of the seventh year. Same as saying the end of six years, start of the seventh. When he comes at the end is when he comes at the end we see of Revelation chapter six. So you have the white horse rider after saying that it's time to work and those who know, know. And they know there's not much time. And then he says, but I will be coming back soon. And then listen to what he says next. Person and rider were gone in a flash, and I was standing back in that field where I started, right there in the middle of the, of the, of the, of the. Of the. White horse rider is then gone. 40 days of the son of man are over. The, the disciple group was following him for those 40 days till about this time. Then they go meet up where the apostles are, wherever this Acts 2.0 will take place. You see? And then what happens? Of the nation. I noticed that the season had changed and the crops were now very busy and know that I'm coming back very soon. And the horse and rider were gone in a flash and I was standing back in that field where I started, right there in the... Now he's standing back in the field that he had already seen mowed, harvested, but remember, some of it was still green. Listen to this. Middle of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the nation. I noticed that the season had changed and the crops were now ready and the fields were absolutely ripe. Uh, but... <laughs> now he's back in the field. He's back in the field where he was. Yet he had already said, <clears throat> he had already said a portion was already harvested. Now he's back in that field where he was. The white horse rider has left. And as he looks in that field where he is now again, somewhere would equal this portion after the rider is gone. He looks and the fields are growing. The fields are green and they're getting ready and they're ripe to harvest. Of course they are. Of course they are. The son of man was just here. The son of man was out warning the escape had happened 
he was here for 40 days he was warning the disciples are there the disciples are now sent out to work who are the disciples what what are they working over what's their portion of time it's the time of bringing in the church it's the time of the greatest revival in all of human history you see these guys are the ones working to bring in that harvest but what do we know about this group of workers this group of smyrna during seals what do we know about them we've been saying it for a long time they're only a small group there's not that many i believe it's 12,000 and 12,000 under dan and under ephraim i believe it's only 24,000 of these workers that are going to be sent throughout the world during the time with the new apostles as well they're the ones bringing in waking up the church in the time of the greatest revival in human history that will also take place during the red horse rider and so forth during the time of world war three it is the smyrna group that is a small group remember it said only two it was only two in luke re- relating to the 12 and twelve thousand and twelve thousand. and at the end of seals they go to the mark group and say hey it's time to wake up you guys the lord is coming remember he said he was coming back soon now here he comes and they don't want to believe him because those guys are still part of the sleeping church right and then the lord comes and what does he do what's the first thing that happens after that battle that war that will take place with against him the one hundred forty-four thousand get sealed first that's the mark group the ones at the end of mark's discord uh, at the end of mark's gospel the ones that didn't believe the two that were remaining and came to them they're the first ones that will be sealed they're the 144,000 who will be sealed what is their job what is their job at the end of seals their job is to what it says therefore in Luke 10 starting in verse 2 therefore said he unto them the harvest truly is great but the laborers are few you see the seals workers they're few pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that he would send forth forth laborers into the harvest who does he send in the hundred and forty four thousand which is why we see them sealed before the great multitude rapture in revelation 7. they are the ones who will help bring in the great multitude Listen to the rest of this. Only a few people were in the field working. I was overcome with emotion and despair because I could realize there's not enough people to do what needs to be done. And then I saw large groups of people coming from every direction, north, south, east, and west. And they were coming with large bags over their shoulders and the old-fashioned sickles like my grandpa used to use to take wheat out of the field. And I saw the shadows begin to shade the fields, but the sun was still up, but it was obviously going down. And the workers were now running at full speed with those bags over their shoulders and those sickles, those fists in their hands. They were, they were running full speed. At this point, I woke up. It was in a few nights later. There you go. That's it, brothers and sisters. Then what do you see? Then you see they needed helpers. There wasn't many because the Luke group of workers during seals are not many. And they're going to need help to bring in the great multitude rapture. And those who will run in coming in to help are this those that will be sealed from the hundred and forty four thousand this is why we covered earlier in mark chapter 16 what these guys will do he tells them after he's upset with them because they didn't believe the workers from seals that said hey he was coming get ready he says the first thing they're going to do is they're going to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature this creature is the mark group the original formation in the creation of days this is the mark group great multitude that they're helping bring in you see this is their first commission and then it says he that believes and so forth and then it says they're going to be given power to cast out devils so what do we see what do you see in luke 10 after 
they help bring in the great multitude rapture. They go and cast out devils, right? They go and cast out devils. <clears throat> Look at what it says in Luke chapter 10. After they help bring in, they go into all the world and they help bring in the great multitude, right? The, this great harvest. Then they go in and they're going, this is now the first half of trumpets. And they're going into all these places. And after the end of the first half of trumpets, three and a half years now into trumpets, after the seventh year of seals and bringing in the great multitude rapture, they were going out and what are they were doing? They were casting out devils. Even the devils were subject unto them. So they were so excited during that first half of trumpets, being able to cast out devils and all these powers and authorities that they had. But then what does he say? Then he sees Satan fall like lightning. This is mid trumpets. And he says, behold, I will give you powers to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy that nothing shall by any means hurt you. Why? Because their names are written in heaven. God's name is written on these guys. We talked about it in the last video. So you see, you follow the, the, uh, the power and the authority that these guys are given. And it starts by going out and helping bring in the great multitude, every creature. And then being able to cast out devils and baptizing people and doing all these things in Jesus' name. And then at mid-trumpets, they shall take up serpents and nothing shall by any means hurt them. This is the great multitude, hundred and forty, or this is the, the, the 144,000 coming to bring in the great multitude at the time of the rapture when those from seals came to them saying, we need the help, come and help. Brothers and sisters, I don't believe he understands it nearly to the point of what we were able to reveal. And you know why? Because this is what we've been given. We have been given the revelation of the end of days. He said there was a group of workers ready and prepared that knew it that knew there was this period of time and that this time was short and they would have to get to work. That they were there with the Lord and then the white horse rider was gone and off they went. But how would it all start? A stone's throw. Let's finish up with this. Check this out. Now, but then come the really strange thing. I ask, what size asteroid are we talking about? Now, Mike around the world is talking about an asteroid that's passing here, either tonight or tomorrow night or something like that, something that NASA's talked about. That one's not that big. That's supposedly what? Um, it's like a thousand foot or something like that. It's relatively small. Uh, not going to come near the Earth. It's, it's mainly the debris is where the issue is. But allegedly, there's one coming through in about three weeks that is... In about three weeks. So this was his live show from May 30th. So three weeks, so about three weeks would be what? Where would about three weeks be from right here? Hello. Where would that be? Somewhere around here? About three weeks? They're not saying this is something that they think might be coming that's so huge that's that's, you know, in a couple or few years from now. No, his scientist friends said they said it was coming in June. The second to the third week of June. Listen to how he describes it. It's bigger than the moon. Bigger than the moon. How many visions, how many dreams over the decades have people seen two moons at the time? When the time of the end would come, it would relate to two moons. What did Coverstone just say? It was like so big, it was almost like a moon, right? Something along those lines. That it was so big. And then the shadow even covered, it was like the size of Texas when it got closer. So of course it would look like the moon, depends how far and how close it is, right? If it's further or closer, everybody's going to see it because it's going to look like a second moon. Now, not it would not impact Earth or nothing. There's no danger of that, but... It is said that you will be able to see it without any question whatsoever. See that? 
everybody will be able to see it. Coverstone sees it going into the ocean, but it not causing anything until a, a ripping up takes place. So they're still in this same range. You see, the scientists or these people are saying, oh, no fear of it hitting the earth. Coverstone says it hits the earth, but there's no danger from it right away until the Lord pushes it into the crust of the earth. And then all the chaos will rip from it. We know that we, there would also be things falling from the sky because men's hearts are failing them for fear of looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. Guys, three weeks, two to three weeks. And in this one, he said three weeks from about this time. And Coverstone's dream is our revelation that we've received and we've understood for a few years now. Covering pre stone's throw, 40 days of the Son of Man, a group of workers that will work seals that won't have enough workers, to the end of seals, and a group of workers coming in to help bring in the great multitude main harvest. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm laying down? <laughs> 14ers, let your hearts be ready. Let your minds be prepared for the Lord to say, hey, 14er, when I knock, will you open? Let me finish with that piece of scripture for you guys. Luke chapter 12, verse 38, I think it is, where it starts. 35, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning and you yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. Here's a great piece of scripture that makes me think that uh, that actually shows me that the workers during seals will not be taken. That Luke 24 group will not be taken to the third heaven for the wedding. But it says, and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Who are they? We've taught on them many times. This group is the group who is watching. This group right here from Luke chapter 24, who when he comes, he sits down to eat with them. Oops, where is it? He comes down to sit and eat with them and serve them. Brothers and sisters, if you remain at this time of the escape, fear not, but know and understand that you have been prepared. Don't allow yourself to be freaked out, but be ready and know that a knock is coming to the door and be ready to open it because it will be the son of man coming to hang out with you to prepare you to go out with him for 40 days to receive then the blessing of the holy ghost with powers beyond and abilities beyond what the original disciples had received in the time of Acts of the Holy Ghost. It will be the time that we call Acts 2.0, a blessing and a power and a knowing and an ability that you could only dream of in Christ, with Christ, knowingly eating and sitting with him receiving understanding what 
it might even be it's a week early according to the book of jubilees so the events could take place between here to start which would mean the time of the of the workers to this point or it could mean it would begin here and the time of the workers to this point but we're about to find out june is the wedding month brothers and sisters i pray this blesses you i pray it strengthens you i pray it has you hitting your knees and start praying for others now pray without ceasing keep watching keep diligent in seeking him and it won't be left a mystery to you it won't be oh i wonder if will i be a bride will i be part of the escape in either case you will absolutely know it when the time comes it will not be a mystery not one piece because you have been forewarned you have been for informed pre-informed so let us all be ready and if it be that we're in the third heaven as part of the bride of christ then remember always sit at the back of the room and let others take the front seats i love you guys god bless you god bless your families we'll talk to you soon bye for now